Hey folks, Joseph Sabori here. Yeah, I just took a small break, you know, just watching movies and going shopping and all that. I mean, my last review was Bad Boys for Life, in which I had an awesome time. I actually went to see this in theaters with my father, along with uh, Mary and my sister Eileen. So we had an awesome time last week. And of course, you know, I, I did went to Target and bought some Blu-rays. Uh, using the gift cards uh, that my family sent me, as well as my father. So it was really nice. Got five titles. I mean, three of them were 20 bucks still, but they were on sale. The last two were $10. That was really nice. And yeah, and of course, I did one shopping at Dollar Tree. and you know, I got several DVDs and some Blu-rays. I even went to Big Lots, um, like way back. Uh, like in December, which I only bought free Blu-rays and stuff. And yeah, the usual. And then and, and I know sometimes we go back and forth to Dollar Tree to see if they have something good. So. I just went there uh, yesterday too. So <laughs> I never thought I'd be able to find some more, but that's why I heard they had a, a great sale. So I'm hoping they have tons of great titles to pick. Uh, anyway, one, one of the DVDs that I picked up uh, at Dollar Tree, surprisingly enough, that I never thought I would find, is the Karate Kid Trilogy. Yes, all three of the Karate Kid films that features Rock Machio and Nobuyuki Pat Morita. <laughs> yes. Now, I'm a bit worried because apparently on this DVD case, it's written in Spanish, you know. El Karate Kid. El Karate Kid 2, El Karate Kid 3. You can even look at the back too. And on the front it says, The Tuche D3 DVD Contres Peliclias. <laughs> El Karate Kid. <laughs> okay. And I know it even says full screen on, on the first movie, and the rest is just anamorphic and stuff. Um. And yes, all three discs stacked up with the first movie in mind. Um, I did my research. Um, it turns out that it's all regular DVDs that came out in the mid-2000s. And they're not in Spanish. Although, yes, there are Spanish audio tracks on the sequels, but they all have different language, you know, English and French, so it's all there. But it's not in Spanish, as it is. Unfortunately, the first movie doesn't even have a Spanish audio track, so that's <laughs> surprising. Yes, so all three of the movies are in English, so not to worry. But hey, that's okay. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being in Spanish either. <laughs> Uh, it has um, all the features, though. Well, the first movie has all the features, so nothing's missing. It's, of course, it's from the regular DVD. And while the second one just has the featurettes um, and um, trailer, third one, not at all. But you get the idea. <laughs> I mean, it, it was actually very nice to see features uh, of the first movie, which had interviews with Ralph Macchio and Nobuyuki Pat Morita when he was still alive. It has uh, Martin Cove and William Zapka and all the rest. So. Okay, yeah. Now, um, with that aside, and I know the Karate Kid just recently got a 4K Ultra HD, you know, 35 Anniversary Edition. Does have the Blu-ray included with features, um, all which reported from this release. Um, but they did add a new feature to join in. It would be nice to pick that up as well. I mean, hopefully, even when the prices go down, I mean, who knows? I I, I wouldn't mind picking up the 4K Ultra HD with the Blu-ray included. See how nice it looks. But again, I don't have a 4K Ultra HD player yet. All right. Okay, but anyway, with that aside, let's let's talk about the movie. Because um, I know uh, The Karate Kid has always been the most popular franchise of them all, yes. It was the highest grossing film ever. 
Uh, I remember watching The Karate Kid as well as their sequels uh, ever since I was a kid. It was on HBO, Cinemax, and sometimes they play it on, on different networks too. So I would watch that anytime when it's on. And yes, I even rented it on home video too, so <laughs> of course. Um, but it's a classic. I mean, it's, it's a story about uh, a young teenager who just uh, moved from Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, he's a new kid in town, all the way to Reseda, California, because his mother uh, just got a new job there. So they just moved to a new apartment, and he meets uh, a very eccentric but very humble a uh, handyman from Okinawa, Japan named Mr. Miyagi. Of course, Daniel is always having those uh, moving blues, very emotional because you know, he doesn't like to move away. I mean, he loves his old town better. But I understand because I, I have that feeling too whenever I move to a new town. But he's being picked on by bullies that are coming from a karate class uh, called the Koba Kai and the leader of the game is none other than Johnny Lawrence who's played by William Zapka yeah which I know he refers Daniel Son yeah Daniel Son as the villain yes you can even see this on the the DVD if you watch special features of the interviews that he said yeah cuz that's what he fought and yes, before it became a Barney Stipson joke in the, the TV series uh, um, How I Met Your Mother, but and I know it also became an internet joke as well, but, but we all knew that uh, Daniel is actually the real hero here. But that's what a villain loves to say, too. <laughs> okay, okay. So the Karate Kid was so popular, though, that inspired a, not only a series of, um, of movies to follow with sequels, you know, Karate Kid 2, 3, and then of course the next Karate Kid with Hilary Swank joining in. Um, and then there's the 2010 remake, which is also known as the Kung Fu Kid. Yeah, Will Smith produced it, um, even though the original producers by Jerry Weinstribe, um, longtime film producer, um, who actually had his own production company for a while, which was uh, Weinstribe Entertainment Group, but before that company uh, went for bankruptcy, and then later he formed his, his second production company for a while and, until his death. With John G. Aberson, you know, best known for directing the Rocky films, well, the first Rocky film, and the fifth one. Yeah. Um, but he also directed Neighbors with um, John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, which is a very underrated comedy. It was also considered to be John's last, sadly. And also getting back to uh, Karate Kid, though, yes, um, Daniel also meets a high school cheerleader named Ali Mills, who's played by Elizabeth Shue. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, okay. Um, okay, for the info here, uh, this was, when they started to make this movie, they had to use the title uh, The Karate Kid, uh, which was taken directly from a DC comic. But I know this wasn't meant to be an adaptation of a DC comic. No, it's just... Uh, a whole different heartwarming coming of age story that they were doing with Robert uh, Mark Carmen uh, coming up with a new idea that this could work for you know for teenagers and young ones around yeah even adults too but of course the story is about relationships so that way you know he can finally be able to train with his master Mr. Miyagi so that way he can now defend himself from getting picked on and also because with all these special techniques and moves and everything that he taught him because he knows karate that he can rebuild um, some kindness and you know build the strength he'll become a lot stronger and not weaker anymore 
And also, of course, I uh, did have an animated series uh, that came out in 1989, aired on NBC Saturday mornings. Uh, it was pretty short lived, but I, I haven't seen the series, I'll be honest. I would have loved to. I mean, I want to see how different it is from the movie. But still. Um, and also, um, uh, they, they have a TV series uh, that aired on YouTube Red. It is on DVD called Koba Kai, you know, which is based on the character uh, of Johnny Lawrence. Yeah, who's the leader of, of the pack. And they just had two seasons by far. Yeah, they, they got Rob Malchio to reprise his role as uh, Daniel Son, as we refer to. So I guess this was just um, just a tribute, you know, just riding along with nostalgia, that sort of thing. Um, I'd love to check it out someday. I mean, if I can find the DVD available somewhere, like I think Walmart might have it. I, I could have sworn they had it there, so or any other store. Um, I'll, I'll check it out. Otherwise, I could just find it online and just watch it, see what I think about it. But okay, and and of course, it's it's the highest grossing film ever made. I mean, out of its eight billion budget, it made ninety one point one million dollars. Even more why? <laughs> Enough to have the, the sequels. Okay. So, um, let's start the review. It stars Rob Macchio, Nobuyuki Pat Morita, Elizabeth Shue, Martin Cove, Randy Heller from Soap, uh, William Zapka, Chad McQueen, yeah, Ron Thomas, uh, Rob Garrison, who just recently passed away sadly. And Tony O'Dell. Of course, Pat Reed is no longer with us either, but you get the idea. It's written by Robert Mark Kamen, the same writer who would later went on to do a collaboration with Luc Besson with films like The Transporter, The Taken Films, and he even wrote uh, The Fifth Element. So, really cool. And it's directed by John G. Aberson, same man who gave us Rocky. And several films in his career. The movie begins when we meet a young teenager named Daniel LaRusso, played by Ralph Macchio, joins him with his mother, Lucille, played by Randy Heller. Uh, they just moved from Newark, New Jersey, their hometown, to Reseda, which is San Fernando Valley, in the Los Angeles uh, California area. They found a new apartment there to stay. We found out that Lucille has a new job there, so that way they'll be able to earn a living. But Daniel is just having some emotional uh, problems, mostly because he doesn't like moving. He just felt like he doesn't fit there, seeing that he's a new kid in town. Um, the apartment has an eccentric but very kind and humble Okinawa immigrant who's a handyman named Mr. Miyagi, who's played by Pat Morita. Of course, um, after you know packing things up, you know just bringing all the stuff around, he does actually uh, bumped into um, another neighbor, joined by, who actually invited him to go to the beach, you know, to celebrate uh, having. You know, a, a party, you know, just having barbecues and playing some soccer and all that with, with his friends around. He actually befriends a high school cheerleader named Ali Mills, who's played by you know, Elizabeth Shue, and she's very beautiful, very smart and intelligent, very kind. She also hangs out with her friends, you know, just uh, listening to music here and there, because <laughs> she has a boombox, you know. But that's where it draws the attention of her arrogant ex-boyfriend named Johnny Lawrence, who's played by William Zapka, who happens to be the leader of the Cobra Kai gang from um, the karate class. He's a black belt and the top student of them all. 
where he studies a vicious form of karate. And that's where he goes around acting like a complete asshole. And he sure is. He actually dumps the, the boom box out of the way. And, you know, Ali tells him he doesn't want to see Johnny, all right? So then Daniel actually butt in and, and he gets beat up by Johnny. But he's trying to... He tries to uh, defend her, so that way, you know, Ali doesn't get attacked. So, yes, Johnny and his gang started beating the shit out of him. And it, then he fights back, saying we're now even. So before long, Johnny just kept uh, bullying and terrorizing him completely. Yeah, throughout the course of, of a couple days, ever since this happened, yeah, like for example, you know, he was riding the bike and they knocked him over straight to the hill and his bike broke and he had received some cuts. So he just couldn't stand it. So he felt like he just wanted to go back home to where he came from because he doesn't want to deal with this anymore. Um, but that is until Mr. Miyagi actually fixes his bike. And it was good as new. In order for him not to deal with uh, Johnny's uh, bullying to him, on Halloween, um, he was actually dressed up as a uh, <laughs> a shower curtain, you know, like, he, yeah, like he was taking a shower and everything. Yeah, I mean, everyone's all dressed up for Halloween, wearing all these costumes. Um, there's even a kid wearing a Spider-Man costume. So anyway, um... Daniel decided to pull a prank on him by going straight to the bathroom and actually taking out a water hose and spray at Johnny. Yeah, while well, he was actually taking a joint. Yeah. And then he and the, and the rest of the gang were pursuing Daniel down the street and just beating the shit out of him. Just before uh, Mr. Miyagi arrived, you know... Just as he was, just after uh, Johnny and his game pulled him down from the fence, um, Miyaki came and actually beats the shit out of him completely. While um, Daniel Son is already knocked unconscious, so that's where he begins to find out that Miyaki um, actually knows uh, karate, you know, through his hometown. But he actually tells uh, Daniel's son that, well, my father knows um, two things. Fish and kuyate. Yeah, kuyate. <laughs> okay, I know, karate. Um, so, Daniel's son was very amazed at um, Miyagi's uh, karate movements that he's done, you know, his martial arts. So he thought that this would be a good way for him to to teach him how to do karate so that way he'll defend himself and be able to to go after uh, Johnny and his game. Um, so unfortunately they it, it's a a formation of a punishment that he had to deal with. So what happened was um, Daniel along with um, Miyagi went straight to the Koba Kai karate class, and that's where he meet uh, John Kreese, who's played by Martin Cove, who's a Special Force Vietnam veteran, who, um, who is, happens to be his sensei of, of Johnny and the rest of the game for Koba Kai. Yeah, he's the one that's teaching them how to, to use karate viciously, completely. And Daniel Song wanted to uh, join in to see how it is because, you know, he has taken karate before at his hometown. So he knows he knows all the moves, but apparently he doesn't know it exactly what he was hoping. So anyway, there was a tournament that's about to go around and, and Miyagi uh, joins in to convince Daniel to enter the All-Valley Karate Championship where he can compete with Johnny and the rest of the Koba Kai students on equal terms. 
and the request that the bullying alone should be ceased so that way you know Johnny and the rest of his game won't pick on him a lot yeah which can also uh, deal with um, the relationship between um, Daniel son and and Ali because sometimes they they do hang out you know just to get to know each other and stuff but then at times you know not pay attention and stuff um, and of course I, I know in, in the middle of the movie um, you know that he was playing soccer and then and Johnny keeps beating the shit out of him too right in front of her while she was doing her cheerleading with the rest of her friends because of that um, Daniel's son had to spend the entire time with uh, Miyagi you know doing all these uh, chores for him to do now what he doesn't realize though that all this chores that he has to do is actually changing the forms of of a special move for for karate training so yes all of that is going to learn all the defensive blocks through a muscle memory that he'll be able to to learn so what's he do well he has to wax um, all these cars that he has at his place and also fix up you know painting uh, the houses you know with different strokes you know like it could be like yeah left and right up and down you know painting the house well also um, brushing the all the wood and paddings and everything and of course you know wax on wax off <laughs> on all these cars yeah breathe in breathe out <laughs> those kind of chores but Daniel's song basically rephrased that as being you know his slave like he's using him as a slave driver but not really he knew that this was going to soon be ready for his next uh, training skills such as the crane kick which that's what he's going to be doing uh, at the beach you know and all these other uh, special technique moves right there <laughs> um, there was actually that one moment too was when the, because as strong as uh, Mr. Miyagi is um, there are a bunch of guys around to uh, having beer. Yeah, one of them actually was played by the late great Larry Drake. You know, before he went on to do L.A. Law and and movies like um, Dark Man. Um, yeah, he, he was putting all these beers um, on the corner of, on onto his uh, his car, and he was you know he was forcing them to get out of the way, but but they didn't listen so what he does is that Mr. Miyagi actually <laughs> uses his karate technique and just cuts straight into all these uh, bottles so I was like wow that was like an instant move there <laughs> yeah with not not a scar cut over his hand whatsoever that's really special okay um also, after his training that he was doing, because it was a very special technique, Daniel applies the life lessons that, that he needed to learn, that Miyagi had taught him, to build him his strength and become more stronger with the relationship, especially with uh, Ali. Um, which, yeah, he, he did learn his lesson about that. You know, that he was, he was acting like a jerk at first, you know, like always ignoring her at times so now you know things are going good for the better um, especially when he now receives a present uh, from Miyagi and that is of course a yellow uh, a yellow beetle or and of course um, he also ha has a present for him to actually use uh, the Karate GI for the tournament so he'll be able to remember all the skills that he's going to do. Um, so yeah, he, he finally gets to drive his own car 
that um, Miyagi gave him as a present, so now he'll be able to hang around with his uh, love interests and do whatever they can. Because, hey, it's the 80s. <laughs> so now when we finally get to the tournament, Daniel surprises everyone by reaching the semifinals. So now he, he begins to use uh, his karate skills to, to actually defeat uh, all the Cobra Kai students. But he does get injured too, you know, where he actually fractured his leg. But Miyagi came to help to, to reform, and now he can finally um, get onto it, uh, finally uh, defeat uh, Johnny, even using the crane kick, and then he won. He won the tournament. So there. <laughs> so that was um, very special for him. And of course, I mean, what can you say about the Karate Kid? It's an amazing classic, a very heartwarming, uh, coming-of-age story. I mean, it definitely shows that Daniel Son is an underdog. I mean, the kind of guy who, you know, who's having his troubles, but yet, you know, he starts out as weak as he can be, but then next thing you know, he's going to become stronger and better than ever. Even become the the best uh, cry fighter to date. And Rob Macchio did an excellent job portraying the role. He was 23 at the time, by the way. I mean, yeah, which was very common at the time. You know, people in their 20s, you know, they started playing teenagers. Because he's supposed to be like 15 or 16 at the most, and I could definitely see that. Um, in fact, I know originally uh, he was going to be cast with other actors. Uh, uh, before he got the part, because of his performance in The Outsiders. They were going to actually get uh, stars like Robert Downey Jr., Tom Cruise, Amigo Estevez, along with his brother Charlie, and, and the rest of the other actors uh, to play the part of, of Daniel's son, but it eventually went to Machio, so I'm glad he was chosen for that. Uh, they were actually going to get um, Toshiro Mafun, who's a a legendary uh, Japanese uh, actor, best known for, for the Akira Kasawa films like Washaman and Seven Samurai, as well as Hidden Fortress, all come to mind. Excellent films, too. Um, problem is, he doesn't speak English, so so they decided to cast uh, Nobuyuki Pat Morita, but at the time, he was known specifically for comedic roles such as um, playing the role Arnold in the TV show Happy Days. Um, and of course he was also in the show uh, Sanford and Son, for those of you who don't know. And he actually has been in like disaster, that one disaster film called uh, When Time Ran Out with an all-star cast and he's been in several films before uh, he finally got the chose, before he finally got the choice to play um, Mr. Miyagi and the trainer of them all who was very kind, knows everything, skills, he, he can fix uh, everything that's been broken so it can be repaired, that sort of thing. I mean, he's, he's a very special man that, that you actually would love to have as, as a trainer too. And also because he's uh, considered to be a surrogate father too for Daniel. Because we also learned that uh, Daniel son actually had a father, but he died. Um, but he, he didn't pretty much get along with him very well, so yeah, it does explain that in part two. That by the time um, he died, the only thing he can say was goodbye. But he could definitely say that, you know, this is like the kind of father that he never thought he would have. I mean... I love it, too. And I'm, I'm glad Pat Morita was cast. He was definitely the right choice. And I, I could definitely say it. I mean, this is the, the movie that made him rekindle his role. And he was actually going to give a nomination for the Oscars. And, yeah, he would have won, actually. Um, 
Um, and I can see why this became so popular too. I um, mean, he has a, a nice soundtrack too. Actually, an excellent soundtrack. <laughs> Better than nice. Um, the best song of out of the soundtrack was none other than Cruel Summer by Banana Rama. It's a cruel, cruel summer. Leaving me here on my own is a cruel, cruel summer. Now you're gone. Yeah, before the song got covered by Ace of Bass. <laughs> but I, I always remember the Banana Rama song more than the Ace of Bass version. Um, and of course, there's a song by Survivor called The Moment of Truth. Great song. It's kind of a, a nod to Eye of the Tiger from Rocky Free. And I love Survivor, too. It's a great band. No doubt about it. Um, and all these other uh, familiar songs, uh, as as you can tell, but but it definitely has a wonderful score by Bill Conti, the same uh, man who who composed uh, the score for Rocky. So he did an excellent job for this movie. And I love all the moments that we saw in the film. Because basically that's what the story is about. You know, it's about, uh, you know, relationships, you know. You know, try to, um, you know, try to teach them how to build some, build a new life. And hoping things will go for the better and not, not for the worse. You know, not, not having to deal with, with everything that's happened. Um... And of course, the fact that karate became so popular and everything. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, um, now besides Rock Machio and Pam Morita, because they were both excellent, Elizabeth Shue was just very beautiful. Um, and for those who don't know, she was uh, uh, best known for doing all these Burger King commercials back in the 80s. Uh, yeah, that was, um, at the time, you know, Another star that was in the Burger King commercials was other other than Emmanuel Lewis, yeah, from Webster, yeah. So he was uh, popular that he was appearing in those commercials, but Elizabeth Shue was uh, was the most uh, famous one of them all, and that's what got her the job. Uh, and she's not the only one too. Um, Meg Ryan was also another actress who had appeared in. And Burger King commercials too. She became popular later. Yeah. Uh, William Zapka, um, yeah, he he was he was excellent in the role of Johnny, considering how much of an asshole he is, the way he's been treating the uh, Daniel song completely, and also the way he treated Ali. But in the end, I mean. During the tournament, I mean, he learned something. So, I mean, by the end of it, he won second place, which I know it's going to lead to part two because of what happened. Anyway, but he was excellent anyway as the villain, very terrific. Um, Brent, as well as um, Martin Cove, I mean, he's the real villain here. As John Kreese, I mean, he was a very tough uh, sensei who's just be able to teach them how to use uh, karate viciously so that way they can do all these hard attacks. You know, deadly attacks, if you think about it. And it's like, wow. I mean, this, this is one tough veteran. Um, anyway. Um... But the story is just magnificent as it is. I mean, everything that you can explain, no doubt. I definitely love all the training skills that that Daniel Son's being taught by Miss Miyagi. It was very special. Yeah. Especially at the beach with the crank kick and all of that. And the fact that he had to do all these chores that would that eventually will turn into a special technique. That will make him stronger and better than ever. And the relationship was just special. Uh, there is one moment, too, that was very sad 
tragic but very touching too was when uh, Miyagi was celebrating the, um, his time when he was a soldier and he actually earned a medal for his uh, resemblance for his Rembrandts and everything. You know, he did a he did a I mean he, he served the country, he did what he can. Uh, the fact that he actually had a wife and soon to be a newborn child, but then sadly um, his wife died along with the child in in her and so he really misses her so much. And um, yeah, he was drunk too, but fell asleep. I mean, when he showed the picture to uh, Daniel Son, and not only that, but also he was soon gave um, Daniel Son the crane, the badge that he hooked it on to uh, his new karate suit that he'd be ready. And yes, he even had uh, the headband too of. Um, uh, the red sun, or this rate black sun, because it's supposed to be red sun, which is symbol for Japan. So in, that way he'll be ready to become a fighter, and of course a lover. <laughs> well, yeah. Of course, we couldn't forget uh, the moment when Mr. Miyagi was catching a fly with a chopstick. I mean, he was having trouble trying to capture that fly, not trying to hurt it. But when he showed that to Danielson, he actually caught it with surprise. <laughs> I mean, that's a memorable moment, also. It's, it can also be an excellent drama, too. Um, I really um, admired the, the idea, you know, of, of the relationship between Danielson and and uh, Mr. Miyagi because that's the real story here. It's about them. It's not just about competing at tournaments or winning the girl of your dreams or having to deal with these bullies. It's just about relationships, you know, and love, of course. Something that um, Daniel's son had really learned about, you know, trying to become as stronger than just being a weakling. You know? See, and it also proves that underdogs deserve respect. So there you have it. Um, so anyway, that's The Karate Kid, the original from 1984, and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. Wax on, wax off. Bye.